Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com. And today I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about what to do if you have a patient and they have short roots or they're showing signs of root resorption. I'm specifically talking about orthodontic patients, um, what next steps are, and that's really gonna depend on where you are in the process of that patient. So I'm gonna kind of divide this up into two or three different buckets. So bucket number one is going to be new patients. Um, you haven't started ortho on them yet. If you're a general or a pediatric dentist, maybe they're your hygiene patient or your recall patient, a new patient. If you're an orthodontist, they're a new patient. Um, the second bucket is going to be you're in the middle of treatment. They're a progress patient in treatment and surprise, you didn't notice it when they started, but now you maybe you took a progress x-ray and now you noticed it. And the third bucket is going to be, you know, you noticed it at debond. So three different buckets. So let's start with bucket number one first. And I have a few random pano x-rays here just so we can kind of make sure we're talking about the same thing. But, um, okay, so bucket number one, patient hasn't started ortho yet. So, of course, you're going to be taking a pano standard of care with any ortho um, patient. If I see any type of root resorption or any th pathology going on, I'm going to go ahead and take PAs or CBCT of those affected areas. So for example, here, it's a little hazy. Do we have root resorption? Do we not have root resorption? I mean, certainly we've got other things going on, but let's pretend like none of this is going on. Take a PA, verify, right? So if the roots are shorter than the other roots, then yeah, you have some root absorption. So from there, I'm going to divide it into three other buckets, sub buckets. First one is going to be mild, moderate, or severe. So mild is going to be one to two millimeters of root resorption. You know, you, obviously you don't know exactly, but you're just looking relative to the other teeth. You might see some blunting in those circumstances instead of the nice tapered apex. Obviously no root resorption here no root resorption here, some here. And something's going on obviously here we know why um mild should be fine i mean it's one of those things where take a pa verify at least you have a baseline point it out to the patient of course you always point everything out to the patient just so they know you may probably want to document it in writing on your treatment plan um always have your patient sign your treatment plan so that way it's, you've shown them the treatment plan you've explained explained the risks benefits and alternatives to the patient should be fine um, usually those patients, I'll put a little flag note, um, you know, standard of care is to do progress pano every year. In this case, we might take a progress PA maybe every four to six months just to make sure, you know, make sure the patient's okay with, you know, additional x-rays um, being taken to monitor. If you are an orthodontist, you shouldn't rely on the general dentist. However, you may want to notify the general dentist to keep an eye on that as well. That way they are notified. So shouldn't be a problem. Um, of course, all your patients should be signing an informed consent form um, for Invisalign. It's already made for clear, correct. It's already made. If you're doing white label liners, you need to make your own. You can't use theirs. Um, if you're doing braces, you should have one. If you don't, I do have templates for these in my store at straightsmilesolutions.com. Take a look. You're welcome to buy one if you want. If you are one of our um, concierge or VIP clients, it comes with documents. We'll be glad to send you everything and anything that you want. Just let us know what you need. Um, okay, so that's that. Now let's talk about moderate in a new patient. Moderate's a little bit more, hmm. Um, still probably can treat. I may or may not send them to an endodontist for a baseline. Usually they're not going to do anything. Um, but, you know, based on maybe how concerned the patient is or, you know, if I'm an orthodontist, I'll double check with the GP, see what they think, but we're going to definitely put them on a more frequent recall of progress x-rays. Um, so I'd call moderate maybe three to six millimeters of root resorption. Definitely notify the patient. Definitely write down in writing and have the patient sign that they've seen it, they know about it, they know they're going to have to have more frequent um, x-rays taken. Now let's talk about that one-off that can happen with moderate or beyond if you start them. Um, if you start them and if it progresses, they're going to have to discontinue treatment and or go to the endodontist for some type of treatment. Sometimes they'll do um, retrofill, effectification. I've seen them do all kinds of different stuff. To be honest, that's really their domain. So whatever they think is needed. That's why it's kind of nice if you send them at the beginning just for a baseline. 
I often actually prefer to send them and I like to get the endodontist to, and of course this is gonna cost the patient extra, so you have to just let them know that you just feel more comfortable with them going to the endodontist first, not sure how much it's gonna cost, and let the endodontist release the patient in writing to go ahead and proceed. You know, you have my okay to go ahead and proceed with orthodontic treatment. In those cases, that way at least the responsibility has now shifted to the endodontist to monitor the patient as well, you know? And they've already talked to the patient about what's going to happen if it progresses. You know, are we discontinuing treatment or are we going to do some type of, you know, treatment to those teeth? And how is insurance going to cover that? Is it not? Um, et cetera, et cetera. What are the best risk benefits and alternatives of that? So my preference is to send them to endo and not to start them until endo clears them for treatment, whether they're just monitoring and I want to see it in writing as well. Um, again, you got to go over risk benefits and alternatives. These are risks. If you don't point it out, um, you know, and I'm maybe not the right person to explain it, better that the specialist does. So patients sometimes get frustrated. They might transfer to another doctor. Oh, well, so be it. You know, you did the right thing in this circumstance. Also, if they're gonna have moderate root resorption, I am not gonna use braces. I'm going to use Invisalign or something with a very, very light force system. Um, often with Invisalign, you can block the movement of certain teeth. So say the root resorption was here, um, often you can build your treatment around those teeth and not move them at all. I'm not saying it's always possible, but you can just stabilize them. You could even theoretically splint them and build the rest of your bite around those teeth. It can't always happen, of course. You know, if they're crowded, that's not going to happen. But if it was really bad, you could do that and you could fix those teeth restoratively afterwards, align them with veneers, and you can move all the rest of the teeth around them. So it's just another idea. You can think outside the box. You definitely can't easily do that with braces. That's the nice thing about aligners, and we all know that aligners, not certain types of aligner companies. Um, obviously, ClearCorrect is very rapid, very aggressive. Um, Invisalign can be very gentle and slow, but you have to direct that treatment plan. You're not gonna try to do an express treatment. You're not gonna do a light. You're gonna do a comprehensive. You're gonna take it slow and low. Um, you're going to take whatever treatment plan the techs give you and you're going to multiply it by three. They said 20 aligners, we're doing 60. You know, slow, low, gentle, tiny, itty bitty little steps is the best thing that you can do for teeth with root resorption. All right, so that was moderate. Severe, you very likely may not treat that patient. Of course, severe is going to go to, is going to go to endo. Um, they're gonna to have to clear them in writing. Even if they do clear them, I'm only gonna do invis, and I'm most likely not gonna move those teeth, except for at the end, I'm gonna build the whole treatment around those teeth. I might do restorative on those teeth. I'm gonna lay off the teeth um, and try to do as little and as limited treatment as possible on those teeth. At the end, we're gonna talk about doing some type of splint, some type of bonded retention, um, and or a perio splint. We can talk to the periodontist about it. A lot of things that we can do um, to stabilize it. Um, but most likely they're gonna need some type of endo treatment, beginning, middle, end, I don't know, let the, endo, let the endodontist decide. Okay, so you guys get the idea. Now, what happens if you have a progress patient? You didn't really notice it at the beginning, you took a progress x-ray, yikes, I see it happening. It happens. That is why you have you know, that section in your informed consent that talks about it. There's a paragraph, it happens. To be honest, it happened to me. I'm definitely a moderate to severe patient. Um, Personally, I think it happened to me just because the occlusion was too heavy on the anterior teeth. I don't think it was I actually had one of the best orthodontists in the country, but you know, in hindsight, um, there was a lot of frematist and they, they put too much, they built too much occlusion on the anterior teeth. And I think that, and really rapid and aggressive use of heavy, heavy, heavy steel wires and a lot of power chain and treatment went way too long. So I was 18. You know, obviously I didn't know anything different, but now I do, that a lot of mistakes were made with my treatment, so. Um, but things you need to know, obviously you need to inform the patient. You're going to likely, depending on if, again, are they mild, moderate, or severe? Same thing, right? Moderate or severe, I would send them to endo, get the clearance to go ahead and proceed with treatment. You may need to change your treatment to from the braces to invis. Obviously the patient will need to pick up the additional lab fee on that cost. You give charge them only lab fee. You know, patients may choose not to do it. So that's where you need to go into your contract. And really, especially if this is happening, you need to talk about how, what it's going to look like to discontinue. Will the patient be getting any type of refund? It's always a great idea to have in your contract that verbiage for if treatment needs to be discontinued, what it looks like for costs. You know, if they're paying monthly, they're probably not getting monthly. 
you know, money back. But if they paid up front, they really should get some money back. I mean, they should. Obviously, if it was an 18-month treatment plan, they were braces, they're on month eight. Yeah, I mean, you're going to get not half back, but you're going to get a certain portion back. And usually that's built into your contract. And if not, that's something you really do want to build, build into your contract. What does that look like if a patient discontinues treatment? Obviously, we're going to pay for services rendered. How is that designed? So a lot of patients think services rendered, well, 18 months, just divide divided by 18. But no, because, you know, treatment plan, records, um, the installation of braces, lab fees, those are all more on the front end. So you're not going to get that much back, you know, that's, but I think a lot of times patients get very upset. So it's better to be really forthcoming with how that works. Um, certainly if you're having to change from braces to Invisalign, patient's going to have to pay for the lab fee adjustment. That's their choice. They can choose to continue. They can choose to discontinue, you know, and get, and get money back. So, um, or you can completely change the treatment plan, just completely get off the front teeth, have no movement on them, finish them up in veneers. Of course, it's gonna be an additional fee. These things are iatrogenic. They often can't be predicted when it happens. We just need to plan accordingly, which is why we take progress x-rays, right? So, um, and of course, if it's very severe, you're gonna to have to send to endo. Yes, patients can get upset, but it is in your informed consent. So you are covered, you know, as long as, as a doctor, as long as you've caught it, diagnosed it, and done proper treatment to go ahead. And sometimes proper treatment means discontinuing treatment. And it's a hard conversation to have. And I've had to have it, I would say several dozen times, um, you know, but you know, most of the time people appreciate it and you're just trying to make accommodations so that they can get a great smile, you know, with restorative treatment. So that's the, you know, we can finish treatment a little early. You can take some of that money and go and go towards veneers on those teeth to finish them up, you know, to finish closing spaces or to finish the alignment. We want you to have your te teeth for life. We don't want them to fall out, right? So there always are patients that get really upset and they want you to continue and they say, I don't care. Well, this is where your first, you know, you take an oath to do no harm. You have to do the right thing. That's not the right thing to do. So you have to unfortunately um, decline to continue treating them. And I'm not saying that they won't go get treatment elsewhere because sometimes they will, but you know, it's not on you at that point because you did the right thing. So in any case, so those are my first two buckets. The last bucket would be the oopsies. We debonded and we never noticed that we were had root resorption and it got really bad because we didn't take progress x-rays. And yikes, what do we do now? Well. I mean, there's a little mea culpa that goes into that. Um, obviously, you're gonna wanna try to accommodate the patient as much as possible. Part of that is on you if you didn't notice it. So whatever you need to do um, to stabilize those that patient's teeth, often that needs some type of splint. Um, making sure that you're not loading any occlusion on those teeth, it might need occlusal equilibration. Of course, you're gonna send them to endo first, um, get additional treatment. Um, financially, not sure how that works. My suggestion in that circumstance is for you to call your TDIC or the AOIC or whatever your risk management company is and to have that conversation because they do have dentists on staff that will go over that case. They'll make sure you're covered. You have whatever documentation you need. And if they need to do a settlement with the patient, they will go ahead and work that out. You never ever do a settlement with a patient in these circumstances without consulting them first because there's certain types of paperwork the patient needs to sign. Otherwise, this is going to come back to haunt you for a lifetime. So you don't just give money back until unless it's all been worked out that they can't come after you later. So you can't, you know, complain to the dental board, anything like that. So it happens. It does happen. I've seen so many of these, especially transfer patients. You don't even want to know hundreds. So it's a definitely if you've ever sat in on risk management seminars for ortho it is a top five liability problem is root resorption. It happens. You need to keep an eye on it and you need to manage it. So. All right, hopefully this was helpful. Thank you.